What's up again guys? Yeah, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Dovahkiin, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access. And uh, before we begin, be sure to hit on the subscribe button for more great videos. Alright, in the previous vid, I showed you how to kill the Red Dragon at the Mountain Pass, and cleared the Xanterim Hideout and the rest of the Risen Road. Today, we venture down south to the Sundit Wetlands, and find out the real deal of this place. Our first encounter will be with two blokes, confronting Auntie Ethel, which as you know, is the Quirks and Sundry's merchant back in the Druid Grove. You're both this close to getting a slap. Please. Lads, for the love of all that is holy, I've never clapped eyes on your poor sister. Drop the act, hag. You was the last to see me, Rena. Just let her go. Please. Thank goodness you're here, sweetie. I, I don't know what's come over these boys. Auntie Ethel's face creases with false concern. You realize she's lying about seeing this girl, Mayrina. Stop this! We... we won't ask again! Bollocks! You were supposed to rush to my defense, love! Fat lot of good you are! Some advice? You ever darken my door, you'd best have that head bowed and an apology at the ready. Bye-bye now. Bloody hells! She just disappeared! I ain't seen nothing like that before. She could shoot fireworks out of her backside for all I care. The hag has Rena. It's our sister, Mayrina. She is... Well, she was in a bad way after her husband died. Started saying weird things, like how she was gonna bring him back. Next thing, she's gone looking for the hag. Of all the stupid things to do. And we haven't seen her since. And no good ever came from dealing with a hag. None of this matters, all right? We need to get her back, and fast! You saying we should leave Rena to that monster? Is that it? Hold on, Joel. Let him talk. What would you suggest? Are you joking? I ain't got a clue who you are. No way I'm leaving Rena to you. But, Joel. Not a chance. We're getting her back on our own. Now come on. If you outright agree to help them, your companions will disapprove. As you saw, I advised them as a wizard and offered help in the end, though they rejected it. That way I got the approval of my team. This starts the Save Marina quest, and there's no point in siding with Ethel, cause you'll end up killing the brothers, which will only give you a total of 2 EXP, one for each. My first task here is to discover the waypoint. Take note, tread lightly. The ponds are riddled with nasty spike traps that can bleed you to death. A chill runs up your spine. You feel like you're being watched. You blink and the wilderness changes. A swamp, stinking and insidious, assaults your senses.
brothers. I guess they didn't find their sister. Not just dead. Gutted. Hardly a painless kill. Now, this is the area's real deal. It's the putrid bog. And Arena's brothers are dead. Anyway, let's explore further. Fresh, sweet-smelling water gurgles gently below. The warm rush of power flows through you. You feel stronger, faster, better. This well gives you the refreshed condition, which works like aid, but twice the boost. Annoyingly, however, you have to make your characters drink from it one by one to get buffed. Okay, as per the Investigate Kaga subquest under Save the Refugees, let's go to the Twisted Tree, which is on an island at the southeast. Once you get near the vicinity, however, you'll see that it's surrounded by monsters. If approached like a noob, you'll soon realize the difficulty of the fight because of the terrain. And speaking of difficult terrain, to make things worse, Star is allergic to running water. So, I will approach it like the veteran tactician that I am, by controlling the high ground. Just watch. of the squad is already there. Now for Lazelle, I'm just gonna use her jump spell to leap directly to the island. Alright, command of the high ground is ours, so let's start the ambush.
And that is how you make things easy. Must be the tree from the note to Kaga. What's that cleft there? Shadow fruits. There's more to Kaga than meets the eye. A pitiless druid harbors a deep secret. Shocking. Again, I'm not going to save the refugees by exposing Kaga's alliance with the Shadow Druids. I'm going to rescue Halsin from the goblins instead, simply because that path is more challenging. Not to mention more kill EXP, but uh, we'll see. By the way, this next encounter will update Star's personal quest, The Pale Elf. And uh, mind you, just play along with the sarcasm of the convo until he gives you the subtle signal. Ah, stranger. Forgive the aroma. You catch a waft of something foul, metallic, and sickly sweet. Powdered iron vine. An old hunter's trick. Most monsters will think twice before making a meal of me. 
You're a monster hunter. I'm surprised. I thought all girl were vagrant cutthroats. And more. We steal chickens, curse your crops, seduce your daughters, the list goes on. Well, I wish I had half the power settled folk think my people possess. Alas, I am a simple wanderer. A simple wanderer and monster hunter. But I'm no witch doctor or cutthroat. Something terrifying, no doubt. Dragon? Cyclops? Kobold? Nothing so dramatic. I'm hunting for a vampire spawn. His name is Astarian, but I fear he's gone to ground. I hope the hag of these lands can help me flush him out, if I can afford her blood price. Not this time. My orders are to capture him. Oh. Uh, and bring him where, exactly? Baldur's Gate. My people wait for me there. I don't know. I'm sure a vampire spawn could still rip out your throat if he felt like it. He is right, unfortunately. They are only weak when compared to their masters. During the day, we have the advantage. But at night, when they hunt, you'll not find a more deadly quarry. We've all survived so far. Let's focus on that. It would still be wise to post guards at night. The threat is real. Indeed it is. We should do something about this threat. Excellent. The vampire? It can't be. Favorite traveling companion. Not anymore. Which is all that matters, really. I didn't do anything. I was kidnapped, just like you. It seems Casador wants me back. Casador Zar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate. The patriarch of his coven, and a monster obsessed with power. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. It was him, I'm sure. Only he would know to send the Gur after me. It was a group of Gur that attacked me that night in Baldur's Gate. I would have died. That Cazador not appeared and saved me. Maybe. Maybe he was just drawn to the smell of blood. The point is, I have history with these barbarians. Cazador's sending a message. He's reminding me of his power. Even in the middle of nowhere, he can reach me. And he wants me back. Maybe he wants to make an example of me, to show what happens to runaways. Or maybe he thinks death is too good for me. <laughs> safe! You think I'm safe? Do you know the power a vampire lord possesses? 
He can change shape, turn into mist, call walls to do his bidding, shrug off blows like they're nothing. He could walk into our camp tonight and kill you with his bare hands. And you'd be lucky if death was the worst thing that happened to you. You don't understand. You don't know him. Just trust me when I say we need to be careful. He'll send more lackeys. He has plenty of souls to command. We just have to be vigilant, keep our wits about us, and kill any monster hunters on sight. Besides being both rogues, Star's master and slave backstory is somehow similar with Sibyl in DOS 2. But hers was on a fearless path of vengeance, and Star, as you saw, is scared shitless from his master. That said, I'm really looking forward on how his emancipation will play out in the full release of this game. Okay, let's explore further into the swamp. These reinforced helmets and greatsword are actually nothing special. They share the same stats with the common ones. See that frog? I'm going to use a pot of animal speaking. Take note. Don't ask it on what it's croaking about, as it will go aggro. And you may want to see this adult frog again after settling matters with Ethel. And uh, speaking of Ethel, these bloodthirsty redcaps are her minions. If you weren't able to unravel the illusion of this area earlier, being the putrid bog that it really is, you will see them as harmless sheep. Annihilating them now will save you the trouble later. For this fight, I'm gonna meet them head on. But again, I'm taking advantage of the terrain. The murderous glare of a red cap, a fey creature known for its bloodlust, greets you. Oh. That noise is the creature pretending to be a sheep. Again, this creature doesn't realize you can see its true form. Nosy, scum-sucking, lice-ridden little ball bag! Get out, or I bite tongue, eat tongue, delicious tongue. <gasps> I bleed you, cut you, or make many delicious holes. Yeah. Yes!
Alright, stay tuned in for the next episode as we deal with Ethel and save Marina. And that is all there is for now. Thanks for watching. Also, check out other videos from Seventh Man Philippines and don't forget to subscribe. See you on my next bit. Peace out, y'all.